So standard helmet construction, we're talking about full shell, motorcycle, or downhill style helmets, consists of an EPS foam, EPS, expanded polystyrene foam. Um, same stuff that's in your styrofoam cups and your beer coolers. Um, stuff is thermally stable, but also takes an impact really well. We've been using these in our helmets for many years and they've been doing a great job. Uh, we continue to use it ourselves. Uh, many people have played with other materials, We've tried different things. Uh, still at the end of the day, um, this still expanded polystyrene leads the industry. It's the most commonly used material. Um, so you have your expanded polystyrene foam and you have your outer shell. So this can be made of plastic, often in an ABS, maybe ABS polycarbonate blend, uh, or a fiber, uh, whether it be fiberglass, whether it be carbon, whether it be Kevlar, or a combination of all three, uh, hard shell. So you take that piece, make them separately, then you take them and you shove them together. It's tricky. You gotta work them in there and you get them in place, okay? And you try and get them to fit in as perfectly as you can. What happens is, on an impact, is you hit this outer shell. This outer shell spreads the load. Can you edit that out? <laughs> so that outer shell spreads the load. That's the job of the shell. The job of the foam is to dissipate that energy. But, as you show there, you have gaps between the foam and shell. On an impact, you hit the outer shell, you get a spike in g-force. As the shell breaks down, the g-forces start to lower. Then you hit the foam and you get a secondary spike in g-forces. And then the, the foam does the rest of the job of dissipating that energy. Well, what you end up having is a double spike in, in energy onto your brain. So your brain slaps one side and slaps again with that, with that double hit. What we wanted to do with composite fusion was eliminate the gap between the foam and shell. We wanted to eliminate that double spike. So what we did is we took upon the task of in molding, injecting the foam in place. Now that process had been developed for simple bicycle helmets years ago. So why didn't people do it before? Um, it's a processing problem. It's uh, with an enclosed unit like this, you couldn't get the steam and pressure back out that you have to put in, which is part of the process of expanding polystyrene foam. So that simple question actually took us three years to solve. Um, it's difficult, it takes more time. I think the biggest reason other people have not done it, other companies, other factories haven't done it, is because of the cost and the time it takes to do it. We believe in it so much, um, we kept fighting through it. We keep getting better at it. Um, we keep getting that process time down. Uh, you'll see, you see our technology being brought down market. But let's talk about the benefits of that. Why bother if it's so hard, right? So what, what we discovered when we did learn how to inject it was we eliminated that gap. We eliminated the double spike in G-forces so you're not bouncing around and your brain isn't bouncing around quite as much. But we also learned we could thin the shell down. That means you get to the foam faster. It also we also found out that we could make softer foam, so softer foam next to your head. Um, just the two units working together now worked more efficiently to distribute that energy, get that energy away from your head.